eyes down for the water. Good morning folks, Monday. I have fitted the gear, fitted the uh, lock piece here which also sets the end float of the lathe and I've set it to just, just a tiny bit of end float. Now then, I've also set the bearings and to set the bearings I've put the grub screws in until they just touch and then I've put a little bit of tension on them right just a little tiny bit of tension just to push the bearing home into the taper and then I've locked them off and that seems to be free but I think well I'm gonna have a chat with uh, with John tonight and see what his take on it is uh, it may be a case of you see the problem is with adjusting the back bearing you can't actually get to it without taking all this off, which means taking this gearbox off. Right, but I think maybe the thing to do is to assemble it, run it, and see if it runs warm. So there you go. So that's probably what I'm going to do, unless I can rig up something. Can I rig up something to turn it? Just to turn it. Like a little electric motor sitting on there and see if it runs warm All right but I mean when you say warm you, you're talking you're talking these bearings should run sort of lukewarm to hand warm on the journals there but no more uh, the idea is to float on a film of oil uh, but you can when you turn it, there is an in initial stiction and then it goes free. Right? So whether that's going to be right or not, I don't know. But we'll... Uh, maybe we ought to, uh, to run it with a motor and then... Uh, Take it. The thing is, once you know how to strip this lathe, it doesn't take long to strip. It really doesn't take long to strip. When you don't know how to strip it, it's a bit of a mystery. But uh, I think I'm going to go for an assemble and see how it goes. I'll just see if I've got anything that I can, I can run it with. Anything I can run it up with. But as I say, once you get over the initial stiction, that's free. All right, I'll bring you back when I've done some more. Bye now. Hi folks, Monday, four o'clock. And I put that bit, I cleaned that bit up and put it back on. This is the patent, takes the end float out of the lead screw device. But I also put that back on as well. Now I may have done the wrong thing. I may have done the wrong thing and I have to and I have to take it all off again. But to be honest, four screws holds that on and two screws holds that on. So it's not a big deal. I've had all the spindle to pieces again and I've readjusted it and um, it's I think it's freer. There's still that initial stiction when you uh when it starts moving and I've had the uh, I've had the air drill driving that piece of rod round which is in a collet uh, and it I mean it's, it's very free but I'm gonna have a chat with uh, with the man tonight on the phone uh, my mate John the uh, Holbrook expert and uh, I'll see what his take is on adjusting the bearings. What I've done is I've fitted the bearings, fitted the pallets, screwed the collar on, lined the screw holes up, 
and then I've put the grub screws in onto the pallets and I've tightened the grub screws down till they just touch and then I've taken each one a quarter of a turn at a time until I could feel it bed feel the bearing bed at the back of the uh, cone and then I've tightened the uh, the holding screws up and it seems to be absolutely fine but I shall, I shall, we'll have a discussion about it tonight and see if that's the way he's done it before uh, of course nobody really knows because I don't know if there's any manuals about for these things there probably were but there you go right so that's all back together but may come apart again I've also put the uh, put the rack on I've cleaned the rack up and put the rack back on so it's coming along a treat it's beginning to look once again like a lathe but I'm not going to put these covers on yet I'm going to find out tonight but what I'm going to do now is in the last sort of dying embers of the day is I'm going to blow up the saddle and pop it on and see what we get right I'll bring you back when I've done it hi again folks Monday just gone five o'clock and there's your result we have a low area there I put the blue on the saddle and rubbed it on the bed we have a low area there we have a low area there or at least we have a striated area there but we've got contact there we've got almost no contact but it's such a small area that it makes you wonder what's been going on the uh, the front V is just about perfect all the way along and the inside of the front V even though it has that big score mark that's a score mark you're looking at not a ridge of uh, blue I hasten to add even though it has that it is still good contact it's a bit it's a bit sketchy there, let me just, I'd probably just be better to zoom you in a bit. There you go. That's the low area. That lacks contact, but still, I don't know, I'm going to go away and think about it. I'm going to go away and think about it. I don't really think there's enough there to warrant doing anything with it I think what I might do is just uh, fill the striations in the back to uh, increase the contact in the back of the saddle here uh, to increase the contact and leave it at that I might not even bother doing that anyway that's it for Monday it's time to go home I've cracked on really well today uh, I might have to take it all off again tomorrow, but as I said, I, I have put gasket cement on that. I've put the, the shellac type gasket cement on the back of that. But as I said, it's only four screws to take out and two screws to remove that. I've also got lots of other jobs done as well. So, it's going well. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Oh look folks, it's all in bits again. I took this off to take that off to strip the whole thing down again and start again. I had a chat with the man last night and uh, he clued me in on how it's done and he clued me in on the clearance which he set them to which is half a thou. Right? If you look at the black if you look at the black ring of figures on this right? each mark is half a thou. And he said, stick a broom handle in and lift. And there's our half thou. And it's the same at the front. Right, so I'm happy with that as far as adjustment's concerned. Now the thing is, strip it down, put the felts back in. <laughs> I've done this off my own bat. John didn't tell me to do this. I've done this off my own bat. I'm now going to strip it down. Put the felts back in and check it again. And when I'm happy, I'm going to put the pulleys on, go for it, and then check it again. 
perhaps I'm being a little bit finickety but there you go that's what I'm going to do so I shall continue I'll bring you back when I'm uh, I've got something new to show you bye now there we are folks that's half a thou per mark and there it is spot on right very pleased back together bye now and there we go folks that shows a marked improvement in run on and it's beautifully smooth and I've set the uh, I've set the end float to about two thou, thou and a half, something like that. There you go. Right. I shall now put it back together. And I'll bring you back when it's done. Bye now. There we are, folks. Just on for show at the moment. But I've just been testing the, uh, the knockoff bar. And it is indeed slightly bent down this area. I don't know why it should be. Like John said, it might have been slung round the bed at some time and squeezed in, but uh, it's not very much and it uh, looks like it's going to straighten easily. But in order to straighten it first, I need to stop doing that. Right. Right, folks. Two o'clock. The front is on the screw cutting box just to test, just as a test and just for sure really, because I need to connect this, that, and there's a and there's a block inside there that needs to be connected, so I'll need it off again. Uh, I've put this front on permanently, uh, but there's a gear. This, there's a gear seems to drag inside, making an unpleasant noise. If I move it to there, it stops. So I need to look at that, right, but there's, that's how free it is now, that's felts in, everything oiled up, it's, uh, it's beautiful, very happy with it. So I might need to take that off again and have a look at what's going on and maybe slightly adjust the position of the, uh, Selector folks. I, I was looking at the selector folks and I thought I wonder if this goes on that way up or that way up Because I haven't taken it off But of course you can rotate it on the spindle and it can be one of two positions So I'm going to look at the alignment and see why it's making that noise uh, Which means taking it off again, but first I'm gonna have a cup of tea I'm going to have a cup of tea, but it's beginning to take shape beginning to look very nice I'm still not sure what to do about the bed, whether to, to bother with it or not. See, it is touching. Apart from there, that's a, that's a low spot. It's touching all the way down over a decent width, but it's touching over little narrow areas, and I'd like to, I'd just like it to bear more on the bed. So, I'll have to see. I've ordered some Belzona anyway. Uh, so that'll be here in the next couple of days. I don't know what to do about this. I mean, what can you do about it? You could fill it with Belzona and then paint it. But you see, it's on the machine surface. It's on the it's on a a T slotted surface, so it shouldn't really be painted. I'll see what the the Belzona looks like. Anything would be better than hundreds of bloody saw cuts. But there you go abuse. Right, I'm going to have a cup of tea. Bye now. Right folks, what have we here? Can you see in there the remains of a pin? That pin needs to come out. And the only way I can think of getting it out is to turn my vertical milling machine into a horizontal milling machine. Put a slitting saw in and slit it down down there look at that dirty finger there slit it down there rotating it in 
that direction until we pick the pin up and see if we can push it out because it's hard as a hobs of hell and I can't drill it and that's cracked out the side that's actually broken out the side I think so I don't even know I haven't tried it with a file yet but that's a job for tomorrow because it's four o'clock and uh, I'm going to need to be fresh and patient to do this properly so there you go and then I shall when I've got a slot in there and I've got the old pin out I shall probably TIG weld it up and re-drill it and then put it in the lathe and turn it up and then refit it and put a pin in it because what the pin's supposed to do is you can see where the pin has been running there the pin hits that shoulder and then hits that shoulder and limits the travel into mesh of these gears on the uh, on the bull gear shaft on the back gear shaft right then of course you can adjust this bush in the casting to get that travel limited by the pin in the right place but unfortunately I put it all back together and I thought this isn't right this isn't right there should be something there should be a stop a positive stop on this somewhere and I had a chat with uh, with John Burke on the on the phone last night and he said yes there is there's a little pin and sure enough when I pulled it all to pieces again there is a little tiny hole with a sheared off pin in it so that's just another little job to do but I, I'm not going to start today today for the rest of the day I'm working on this now I've got the uh, I've got the bronze nut off the cross slide and uh, that doesn't seem to be badly worn. The thread's a little rounded in the centre as you would expect. But the problem is this. Now there's a nice little square there which you loosen to allow this to swivel. And I've whoops. I've loosened it and it's swivelling. I'll just take you back a bit, that's better. It's swivelling beautifully, but I can't get it off. So I need to know how it comes off. And second problem is this repair. These Allen screws are as tight as the hobs of hell. So I would guess, I would guess that they've been locked tighted in. So that means to break it off, I've got to heat it, probably heat it from the underside, uh, which means getting this off. So I'm going to carry on, investigate, and see if I can find out how it comes to bits. So if I get it to bits before five o'clock, I'll bring you back. If not, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now. Right, folks just gone five o'clock and we've got most of it in pieces and I've begun to fathom how it, how it works although it's very unusual uh, and I think John Burke did say to me I don't think that's the right cross slide uh, top slide sorry not cross slide and I looked at it and I thought, well that looks original, this looks right. But when you turn it over, it looks like it's machined out of a piece of steel, rather than being a casting. And this looks like a very new machine slot, with a thread that is overrun into there. Now, I still haven't managed to get this out, this uh, pivot device here, but I've slacked it all off and slid it off. I haven't found, I've been looking for number 7s which are the original, uh, is the original uh, parts, every part on this lathe has a 7 stamped on it so that they knew which build it was of. Now I've found the number 7 on here which is pretty obvious, it's pretty obvious I've set there, look. there's the number 7 on there, can you see that? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Yes, you can, it's there, look. Right, so this is an original piece, but the rest, I don't know. I'm just... All the holes are crammed full of brass or bronze filings. But, I'm very pleased with the condition of the top slide thread is in good condition. The top slide nut, bronze nut, seems to be in good condition. 
Now the nut fits over that peg there. Is that peg threaded? Can you screw that peg out or does it just pull out? I don't know but it's turning anyway. I think that's threaded, I think that will slide up. Maybe not. Maybe not. Anyway, the uh, the bronze nut locates over that peg. Right? And is held down at the moment by nothing. But I have a feeling there should be a screw through there to hold it down. To put some pressure on top of it to hold it down. And I think that's maybe what's What's made John realise that it's not the original, it's not an original top side. Anyway, it all looks to be in good condition. There's no wear on the V's or anything, so I'm willing to go with it. The, uh, the quick start thread is in beautiful condition. Why that's been ground off there is anybody's guess. Oh look, can you see that? That's a three. That's a three. Maybe not originally off the same lathe. I've also noticed that this pin at the other side is a three. So there you go, we've got a bitzer. Bits of this and bits of that. Also, Somebody's been doing some uh, horrid bodging. Probably drilled a pin out, and they've been doing some horrid bodging. But it, it's it's it, it works. It's not worth trying to repair it. It works. It's okay. Uh, everything else seems to be in good condition. Everything else seems to be in good condition. Uh, so I'll clean it all off tomorrow. But for now. That's it folks, I'm going home and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Good afternoon people. It's Wednesday, it's half past four. I didn't get to that, uh, doing that pin today because uh, I didn't get here till after lunch because we had visitors this morning. So what I did was strip down the cross slide and the top slide mechanism and they look pretty good but they're not all original now everything that I've found on this lathe so far every component that needs to be fitted uh, by an engineer at the lathe when it's being built I mean has a number stamped on it and that number has been number seven but this this, can you see that? It's number 13. So I don't think that's original to this lathe. This, the actual cross slide, if I can find it, yes there, is number 7. But this, as John so rightly told me, is not because listen to this what's that that's milling marks this is new this has been milled out of a piece of billet I think that's steel and it's been milled out of a piece of billet and very nice job made too apart from they've gone a bit far in there with that uh, bull nose cutter and you can just see that the threads are just poking out but it fits beautifully right? the bit I don't like is this now if you went to the trouble of making something as good as that what's this doing here? because it's not flush with there now I know the pressure is down on that edge, so it's lifting up on that edge, but even so, uh, it would be nice if yay and yay was flush, and it's not. And of course, 
it looks like the Allen screws have been put in with uh, Loctite or, or Araldite or something because they won't come out. So in, in order to get them out I'm going to have to put that in the oven and bake it. And give it a try then. And then what I would do is I would machine that piece off there. Square it up. Because it doesn't fit there either look. You know why, why couldn't it have been made to fit? Well the answer is it could have been made to fit but it was done by a different hand wasn't it? You see if I... If I lose these, uh, there's already one head that won't turn uh, that one, I think, that won't take an Allen key. Uh, but the other three will, the other three are okay. So I can't machine it in position, or else I'll lose even more Allen screw head. So there's another dilemma. I would like to make that fit properly. That edge I can machine off, the edges I can machine off, I can just set it up and machine it flush which will be very very easy but that edge I can't and I would like to get rid of it so what's to do well I haven't made my mind up yet as to all these pieces the uh, everything works the uh, the quick release the quick the quick back control works perfectly oddly that's a very shallow hole and there is no thread in there and there does not appear to be a sheared off piece but I could be wrong. Right? Uh, this has been badly repaired but it's been repaired and it's fine. The only reason I say it's been... I don't know if I can get that off with one hand. Yes I can. The only reason I say it's been badly repaired is because somebody's whacked a hole through it and put an Allen screw in it and they've not got the hole in the middle of the shaft. But there you go, that's by the by, it's all there, all that's cleaned up okay, that's not a genuine handle, I'll probably make one for it. The, there's no wear on the nuts to speak of. This pin, which locates this nut in the, sli in the slide, on the top of the slide, has got quite a lot of play in it, which I don't want. But that again is something that can easily be rectified. This this is in fairly good condition. This has got a, what looks like a modern uh, countersunk Allen screw in it. And also a piece soldered on by the look of it. Yes it is, it's soldered on. But there you go. There you go. But it seems to be good. This thread, as you can probably see, is a little bit rounded in the middle. But not seriously, so I'm willing to go with that until I prove it otherwise. Uh, but everything else, I think this piece has been made new. I think that's new. Uh, this thread is perfect. So all in all, we're in fairly good condition. I puzzled on how to get this out. Into, oops, a nasty piece of swarf there. I haven't cleaned this yet. I puzzled on how to get this out until I realised it was a can. When it was slack it just pulled out. So there you go. This is this is okay, this is in fair condition. So there you go. Which is what I've done today, a lot of cleaning up. I've also just bashed the rust off this chuck. I forget what I forget the make of these chucks, but they're they're rated. They're rated as very good. Uh, and I was looking for one for the see if I could get one for the student. But uh, no matter, I've got one for this now. Uh, I've got the uh, the quadrant out, the uh, the gear fitting for here. I've tried that on. That's fine. That fits. I've got all the bits for that. All the gears. Well, I won't say all the gears, but I've got a good selection of gears. Uh, and the lathe was in use when I got it. So there you go. I put the uh, I put the spanner rack on, just uh, so I could use the oiler. And uh, it works fine. I'm pro I don't know what to do with that. I don't know whether to paint it black inside there or not. Uh, certainly the, the sides are polished up lovely. They're going to stay. They're going to stay clean. I think they are painted black inside, but who knows? Other than that, I think I showed you that yesterday. That's about all I've got done today. Oh, I did put the I put the shaft in, and and uh, true to form, it is very slightly bent, but. Uh, I've got to. Oh no! I've put it into. I've put it into the uh, 
I put it into the block at that end so it won't rotate anymore. But uh, it's well within the realms of an easy straight, and so I'm not too bothered about that. And uh, that's about all I've got done today, really. I've only been here about three hours. But never mind. I shall now tidy the bench down, as usual. Okay, catch you all tomorrow. Bye now. Morning, folks. Well, the pin is out. Not by courtesy of the milling machine, but by courtesy of the very fine slitting disc on a tiny little angle grinder. Like this type. And the pin is out. So the next job is to TIG that up and to re-drill it. So, then comes a problem. The TIG welder is not working. The TIG welder is working, but the gas valve inside is leaking. So next job is to take the bottle off, take the top off, and remake the end of the pipe or fit a new pipe to stop the gas leaking away. So, that's what I'm on with this morning. One job leads to another. I didn't use them in the machine because I figured that I arrived here in all good faith to strip the vertical head off and go back to horizontal so that I could put the shaft in there and drop a slitting saw onto it and get it out. But as it was, I took one look at that and thought this is a big job. I need to drain the oil out of the, out of the head. I need to take this piece off first, then I need to take that piece off because it's if you don't it, this is too heavy to lift what i want really is one of those little nice little crane things that fits on the side of the mini machine and swings it out of the way but of course if i want one of those i have to make one because i don't think harris never made one so there you go they were they were on american mills they were on i think they were on kearney and trackers uh you had a little crane device and it's only small and it came around here and it bolted onto there and then you just slacken these bolts, pulled this off and swung it out of the way. Fabulous idea. So I thought, well, what about my tiny little thin slitting disc? So I did it with the slitting disc. And as soon as I exposed a bit of the pin, uh, I got a very small punch and tapped it and it broke up and came out. So now we just need to TIG that up again and re-drill it for a new pin. So that's going to be a dicey job, but I'm going to do it. So first, mend the TIG welder. If not, I'll have to make it, and that's not as easy. Okay, bye now. We're in. Does it look familiar? Can you remember doing this before? You only have to take 20 bolts out to get the lid off. Could that explain it, do you think? Do you think that might be out to go on there? Crazy, I don't know how that's happened. It's been pulled. It's been pulled and it's just popped off. Right, I'll clap it back together and get it back on. Bye now. So there we are folks. All welded up again. Turned back to the right size and polished. Well not quite polished yet, but I'm gonna drill the hole next. Uh and see if we can make a disaster out of that. Right, bring you back when I've done it. Bye now. And there we are, folks. Just gone two o'clock. Welded up again. Turned round. Hole drilled. New pin. Fixed. Thank goodness for that. Horrible little job. But done now. So on to the next. Whoopee. And there we are folks, all assembled, I'll kick, I'll kick the bucket over, all assembled and working beautifully and there's the stop, lovely, because it does help if you assemble it with the handle at this end instead of that end, because if you assemble the handle with that end it doesn't make any sense whatsoever until you realise I'm putting this together wrong and then when you put it together right 
everything suddenly falls into place. The hole in the bush lines up perfectly with the set screw and it all works perfectly. So long since I took it off, that's the problem. Of course, one has to refer to Tony at lathes.co.uk because that is the Bible and it just so happens that my friend and mentor, John Burke, has got all his pictures on there. So there you go. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Right. Oil it up. Carry on. Next job, I think, is going to be to start making some sense of this because what we've got here is we've got a pin a pin that drops into there like that and is supposed to locate on that hole there to stop that sliding moving out of the way. Now first of all the pin and the hole in the bush are not a very good fit. There isn't a lot of meat on there and I have a feeling we might be able to get some more on by, by soldering a piece on. But I'm going to look at it first. I've got to get the get it lined up so that the thread is straight because there's no play on the thread whatsoever. Right? There's no up and down play on the thread so it's got to be spot on. So if that puts that at the right height I can just, you know, if there's a bit of room in there I can solder some thickness onto there. There you go. So this is going to take a careful a careful looking at now, now that I've got the uh, the back gear assembled correctly. Right, on we go. Bye now. Right folks, five o'clock, two revelations. I made two new pins for these bar holes here because the pin that was in was this which is far too short and disappears into the uh, into the body of this but luckily it's so loose it pulled out the magnet right so we've got that out I've put, fitted two correct length pins in there that actually looks a little short but it doesn't matter right and then I've fitted up the uh, the nut and popped this pin in now as far as I can remember looking at pictures on the Holbrook group that pin should be integral with that. Why it's been cut off and bored for that hole I don't know but I think it's shortly going to have uh, a refitted pin uh, because it's it can be assembled. I was thinking well maybe you can assemble it but all you do is assemble the nut into the uh, base here and then fit it up tighten that up and then put the thread in from the outside so it's not difficult and the second thing I did was this I looked at it and thought that's two pieces I'll just give it a tap and I gave it a tap and sure enough it came out and there's the hole that should be lined up with that hole so there you go so we've uh, we've solved that puzzle as well All right so that one's putting together with those two holes lined up and there's the thread to put our little handle on so there we go so we've made good progress good progress today uh, but that's it and I've only half drunk my tea never mind we shall carry on tomorrow catch you all tomorrow bye now hello folks it's Friday I have a tale for you I looked at that note and I thought, I wonder if I can solder a pin into it. Because it is bronze and it's solderable. And the answer is yes. But how did you do it, I hear you say. How did you stop the wood? How did, wood? How did you stop the solder going down into the thread? Well, I got a piece of half inch dowel. And I cut a 10 TPI Acme thread on it and screwed it into the nut and then popped the brass pin in and, uh, and soldered it and then screwed it out. Perfect. Now if it snaps, it snaps. There's no loss. But the thing is, uh, I haven't any material. I have plenty of material but I haven't got anything in the right shape or the right size. This is of course where my furnace would be, my little electrical furnace would be ideal to just make a piece, just, just 
make a rough uh, a rough mould, a rough pattern, and and just make cast a nut. Be dead easy. Except my furnace is out of commission, I can't do it. So there you go. Anyway, it's worked. I've got it back together. I've fitted two pins in there. One was missing. One was pushed right in. And uh, it all seems like it's going to be okay. Uh, I'm going to pop this in the milling machine. I'm not going to mill this right away for flush. I'm just going to clean it up. Just so that it looks half decent. The same with that. The same with the other side. Then that's the top slide finished. I've got to strip it down and rebuild it of course. Uh, oh yes I showed you that didn't I? Yes that's, co that's come out right as well. So we're all going forwards. And I was just about to start filming. When the lens fell out of my glasses. So I've got that to fix now. Then I've got to go and pick Emily up. So that's it for this week folks. So thanks for watching. Thank you all for subscribing. We've got two or three new subscribers this week. So keep on keeping on subscribing. Keep on watching. He said desperately trying to unwrap the whole book. And that's what we've achieved this week. Not bad. See you all next week. Bye now.